welcome to The Goal. I'm Susan Cartmel. It says in the Bible, press on toward the goal, the prize, which is faith. A lot of people think that prize of faith is something that people worried about in the past. They think that churches and faith as it's been presented is sort of locked in stone or in stone tablets. But churches actually are changing, or they should be. And faith is definitely all about people on the move. Certainly the Bible stories are about people who are changing, changing the way they think about things and challenging us to think in new ways about faith itself. This week I heard that we have a new definition of life expectancy in our country and that as a nation, we have lost a whole year of life expectancy when you average everything together. We are now about to mark the fact that almost half a million people in America have died of the pandemic, COVID-19. And it has changed the actual statistics for life expectancy by one whole year. But the most disturbing part about the statistic is not just the average, but the way it breaks down racially. So people of color are much more likely to have died of this pandemic and so that in communities that are largely Hispanic, life expectancy has dropped not just by one year, but by 1.9, almost two years. And for the black African-American community, the drop is 2.7. So there's a huge disparity in our country between um, even life expectancy now because it, we notice that statistics tell us that if you get sick with this disease, you're much more likely to be hospitalized or to die um, if you're not white. It tells us a lot about the horrible disparity of care and health in our country. Something we should think about, I think. I think what it also helps us to recognize is that as we heal as a nation, we're going to need to be more honest with one another about what's really gone on and how it's affected everyone, not just people in the upper class or the middle class, but how it's affected all people of every class, every race, every nationality, every ethnic background. And that's something we need to look at if we really want to heal as a people. And the other thing that um, I've been thinking about a lot is that it is so drummed into us as people of faith that we need to be kind and good and generous to those who have less than we do. But what we often don't see, and something that the Bible makes really, really clear, is that our entitlement, our upper class status, or even our middle class status, can make us oblivious to some of the gifts of life because we have sheltered ourselves in ways that cut us off from relationships with a wider group of people. See, entitlement carries its own costs, and that's something we fail to see most of the time. When we're too frightened of people who are not like us, we lose the opportunity to have relationships with them. When we're too busy with our own needs or finding our own friends in our own circle, we miss out on the wider friendships that happen to people who are open to others, really open to others, and have less prejudice. I think prejudice in all of us, though, is something that's internal. We all have class prejudice. We all have racial prejudice. We all have homophobia. It's ingrained in us, in our society, and in some of our cultural values. There's a great story in the Bible in 2 Kings 5 about a man who was at the top of his game in every single way. 
His name was Naaman, and he was a general in Syria at a time when Syria wasn't like it is today, but Syria was a mighty empire, 700 years, B, 700 BC, and it stretched from Turkey to Egypt. So it was huge, and it was the most powerful nation in the world. And the general in that army named Naaman um, had a terrible disease. He had leprosy. Even though he was powerful and had done a lot of things and was well-respected, his skin was awful. And people didn't want to talk about it because he kept trying to avoid dealing with it because he couldn't figure out how to get some healing. And in the story in the Bible in 2 Kings, a maid points out to his wife that she thinks there might be someone who could help him. And the problem is, or the irony is for them, that the person who could help them is a prophet in Israel. And at the time, Syria had overrun the borders of Israel and dominated Israel and taken from them. So now, if Naaman really wanted to get healed, he'd have to go back and ask for help. He didn't like to ask anybody for help. And the story has a lot of twists and turns to it, but in the end, he goes to see Elisha, and he tries to put on airs, and Elisha doesn't care. And then Elisha tells him, well, if you really want to get well, you need to dip into the River Jordan, the small, muddy Jordan that was the river in Israel, seven times and you'll be fine. Um, Who knows what made people well or what worked long ago or what works today. But in those days, that seemed to be the prescription for his leprosy. And he didn't want to take it. He didn't want to follow the advice. He didn't want to do what the prophet told him because he said, we have much better rivers in Syria, even though none of them had helped him. I can't believe that I have to do this. It's mortifying. It's beneath me. And so he walked away. And finally, his servants came to him and said, why not give it a try? And when he did, he was healed. The story helps us to see that sometimes we get in the way. And sometimes our entitlement doesn't help us or serve us well at all. It's a problem. Thanks for listening. This is The Goal, and I'm Susan Carmel.